Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the first ever live video chat for CollaborativePlanet.com. Thank you very much for your patience through our uh, understandable troubles. Uh, hopefully you're all still on the uh, live text chat part of our presentation today uh, and uh, have been putting up great questions and not so much hatred. Uh, today we're going to be joined by Gary Auden. Uh, Gary Auden uh, has more than 40 years of computer communications and security experience. He's planned, designed, specified, implemented, and operated data, LAN, and telephone networks in the US, Canada, Europe, Australia, Asia, and the Caribbean. He's been published extensively and has been a keynote speaker at many user conferences and delivered many webcasts on VoIP and IP communication technologies from 2004 through 2009. Gary is a founder of the ANSI X.9 committee and a senior member of the IEEE. Uh, Gary, welcome to our first video. Uh, thank you. So let's uh, start right off the bat, uh, giving these people who've been so patient with some uh, good content here. Uh, how about you give us a quick definition of unified communications as you see it, uh, and then also maybe a definition of cloud-based UC, uh, it's a uh, sibling. Well, if we start off with the UC definition, what you're gonna find is vendors tend to define it as to what they can deliver. So my definition includes some things that sometimes vendors don't include. Uh, obviously there's voice and voicemail, video and voice conferencing, email, presence, which is relatively new. We're gonna fold in instant messaging, web conferencing, unified messaging. Some will also include chat and fax. And the funny thing about fax is most people think it's dead, but it's still a very busy technology. Uh, Gary, let me just uh, hold you uh, for a second right there. You say some will include chat. M my take on UC would be that that's gonna be a default part of it, but you're not saying that that's the case in the way a lot of people see it. I, I think you have to ask because the way things have been defined in UC, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. But I, I did a survey of about 210 UC and communications cloud companies about a year and a half ago, and not everybody had everything. So you just have to ask. Okay, well that makes sense. Uh, so then let's uh, continue on to uh, the cloud-based uh, way that UC gets deployed. Well, in most cases, the cloud-based is simply an outsourcing of what you would have on your premises. You still have to have phones, you still have to have a network, within your own environment, most likely, but not necessarily, you'll contact the cloud through the internet. But you might find some service providers will also include an MPLS connection, and that allows us to deliver quality of service and some better uh, reliability. But it's just a service, and usually it's menu-based. And you will find that there are those who go after SMBs, the small companies, those who go after enterprises, some that go after specific markets like education. Uh, thank you, Gary. Um, let's move on to the next question uh, that I have here. Uh, one of the drivers for the cloud in general uh, is the shift of IT costs from capital expenditures to operational expenditures. Uh, is that more or less important for moving UC to the cloud? The smaller the enterprise, the more likely they're going to see that as attractive. Because what they're looking at is something which they can budget for, go ahead year after year saying, this is my price, this is my price, this is my price. <laughs> As you get to larger enterprises, that would be more capital cost of new kinds of technology. In other words, you might find a, an enterprise says, we'd like to add on this collaboration function. We'll put that in the cloud, but keep our on-premise system. And then we'll see, is that collaboration gonna pay for us? So sometimes the cloud is used as an experiment for collaboration technologies rather than an absolute commitment. And so if it does prove to be beneficial to the corporation, then they move it back on premises, unless it's just a small community that uses it within the organization. Well, that's, uh, let me follow up on that one. That's uh, interesting in that you say that if they're using it as an experiment uh, in the cloud, they generally then move to on-premises install. Isn't that uh, sort of like uh, going to the local uh, big box store and then buying your stuff online? I, I mean, why wouldn't you if you like the way the service works in the cloud, just stick with the cloud. Well, the point is, is if I have an on-premise system, adding that functionality to my on-premise system is probably an incremental cost. But I didn't want to attack that initially saying, it's an experiment, let's see what marketing does with this. Let's see what the salespeople do on mobile devices do with this. Is this really doing something for us? And maybe we keep it on the cloud if that's just that community. But can you imagine a data entry person needing video conferencing, for example? Good so point. there's going to be people within the corporation that don't need the UC capabilities. So I might look at it and say, which would be cheaper? And one of the points I want to make, which is 
people talking about return on investment and TCO about this stuff. I've done analysis, and generally speaking, the way cloud rates work versus an on-premise system, if you're going to keep an on-premise system more than three and a half to four years, it's cheaper than the cloud. If you plan to roll it over sooner than that, it's much cheaper to go with the cloud. Hmm. So you're saying that the, uh, the TCO and the ROI is based more on turnover of technology. That's right. So if you think there's going to be rapid turnover, cloud is definitely the way to go. Right? If you think you're going to keep a rather stable environment and not add a lot of stuff, on-premise is more likely the way to go. Okay. And that seems to imply that uh, it makes more sense then for the smaller enterprise than the larger enterprise. The larger enterprise is going to take a longer time in making decisions to make technology upgrades, whereas the smaller enterprises, at least we're told, are more flexible and more agile. But also with a smaller enterprise, you have a much smaller staff, and they just don't need any more work. In many cases, they're having trouble just keeping up with what's uh, happening in the organization. So putting stuff in the cloud actually is augmenting and sending responsibilities out, but they're still providing the services internally. All right, that makes sense. Uh, so let's move on to uh, another question here. Um, aside from that shift from CapEx to OpEx, uh, what are some of the other benefits of adopting uh, cloud-based UC? Well, one of the things is I might be able to, with cloud, talk to my customers and my vendors better. So in other words, increasing the community out there because it's not my on-premise system, all right? But also looking at the cloud, it may be that I can do very well domestically, but when I have a lot of international contacts, cloud may be a lot easier to implement for an international communications, all right? All right, and I start thinking about connecting all the stuff to, let's say, disparate systems. What if I have a Cisco system, someone else has an Avaya system, uh, they're really not interoperable. But if I do the same work in the cloud, I'm interoperable. Well, that's, so I can. Uh, just, Gary, that's interesting because a lot of people still talk about lock-in in the cloud, uh, depending upon whether you've got a proprietary vendor uh, or cloud service provider or not. You're saying that, as a rule, that uh, issue of lock-in or proprietary problems is less likely to come up if you're on the cloud than if you've got an on-premise. Well, not exactly. Okay. If you go with a cloud vendor that has a proprietary solution, all right, you are probably stuck with a contract. You may not be. But the point is, it's not easy to move among clouds. One point is, there's no standard application program interface for cloud functions. Right. So if you're going to write some stuff on top of the UC for um, what we call about CEBP, uh, en enabled processes, mm -hmm you can't move around. The second thing is, there's no standard for two clouds to talk to each other. So if I'm a cloud servicing a state government, and then there's a bunch of cities that have different clouds, I'm going to have real trouble getting those two to work together. So I end up kind of looking at, can I do it all with one cloud and be happy with them? That does form a form of lock-in, but it does solve a number of other problems. Okay. So if the idea of being able to connect to your customer more easily via the cloud, uh, then if you have an on-premises, isn't a lock-in issue, uh, is it just simply that the cloud is more available? The cloud is more available. It, in a sense, I would not use the word standardized, but it has a lot of common features that everyone uses. Mm -hmm. right. However, you always find with, with cloud services, there's always something new coming along because they keep expanding. For example, a lot of them started off with voice and voicemail, voice conferencing, email, added video later. Right. But if you start looking at pieces of what I defined as UC, there's a ton of cloud-based companies just for video conferencing alone that can take care of incompatible video devices and translate them in real time so they can all talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So if you have incompatible devices, the cloud may make them interoperable. Yeah. Uh, while we're talking about uh, sort of the benefits uh, of moving to the cloud for your UC, let's do a follow-up on uh, that. Can uh, Unified Communications as a Service really be as flexible as the way the rest of the cloud is marketed uh, the idea that you can just spin up uh, you know, use cases and instances uh, instantly and then drop it off so that you're not spending money on that particular piece of technology just as fast? Yes. UC in the cloud is the same as any other cloud service. One of the interesting things, though, you might try as a cloud service is instead of going with a UC as a service company, you go either platform or infrastructure and put your own software in there. So it's still in the cloud, but it's your software, and you set it up, but you've moved the data center to their operation. So you don't always think of UC in the cloud as 
all UC services. It might be platform of service with proprietary uh, software or licensed software in your own private cloud. Mm -hmm. It's still a, a, a benefit to you. That's, uh, you're going to make me jump down the page here a little bit to follow up on that. Uh, what kinds of companies should look for, then, a complete UC solution uh, in the cloud? And what kinds of companies would be better off served uh, by that description? Picking an infrastructure, picking a platform, and then dropping the particular pieces of UC on that they need. Well, let's talk about dollars. Mm -hmm. If I'm a company that does not have many capital dollars, I'm a definite candidate for the cloud. If I'm dealing with, let's say, K through 12 schools that have single year budgets, I'm definitely somewhat um, interested in the cloud. So there are a lot of companies that are actually service companies that don't have a lot of capital dollars where they should look for the cloud. But if you look, let's say, at a utility company, you might find that their profit is based on their capital investment. They'd be less likely to go to the cloud. So it actually comes up to some degree, what's the business model of the organization? The more it's organized towards expense, the more likely to go to the cloud. More organized towards capital investment, less likely to go to the cloud, although they may go to the cloud for special features or add-ons, but still keep the wrong premise system. All right, that, that makes a, a, a lot of sense. Um, so if... Um if Unified Communications as a Service is just a solution for small or mid-sized businesses, and we're not saying it is, but there are people who make that argument, um, uh, does it make sense for a large enterprise that may already have a sizable investment uh, in UC equipment and technology to go to the cloud? Um, what would be the argument to make that big a transition for a large enterprise? End of sale of what they own, and then end of support. That always comes up. The next point is, and this has happened with many of the prop uh, proprietary systems, is you eventually get to a point where the software upgrades required to replace all your servers because your servers have just gotten too small. Right? So when you hit that point to say, well, let's look at the cloud again. Should we put this capital investment in and all this work, or should we go to the cloud? So I would say about every three years, even a large organization would have to revisit the cloud based on what their capital expenses have been and whether they want to incur them in the future. Right now, it's pretty cheap to buy money. <laughs> but when interest rates are high, then I'm even more inclined to go cloud-based. Mm -hmm. As where interest rates are low, I may be a little more inclined to go towards a capital investment. Oh, that's sort of uh, getting back to your point about uh, uh, companies that have a tendency to hang on to technology, um, uh, getting a better result from having the technology on hand, uh, as opposed to the companies that uh, turn over technology faster, uh, getting a better result if they're going to the cloud. Uh, if you say the large enterprise turns over technology about once every three years, doesn't that sort of automatically put them in the category of a fairly rapid turnover? Yeah, uh, but if you start thinking, well, let's talk about mobility systems. Mm -hmm. It's every two years, all right? Right. Service, it's every three to four years. So somewhere in that time period, it, just the financing invites you to look at alternatives. Doesn't mean you're going to go to the cloud, but you're going to re-invest uh, time in considering whether a cloud solution is the right one. Or you may decide, like if you're asking about large enterprises, mm -hmm. what if I'm a large enterprise with 500 small offices like an insurance company, all right? Do I really want to put an IP network dedicated to all those offices or not? Am I already communicating with those offices over the internet? If I am, then a cloud is a much better idea. If on the other hand, I have direct MPLS service to all those offices, I might consider adding the UC services on top of that. I worked with one insurance company, though, when we sat down and looked at the cost of putting this in insurance offices of five to 20 people, we couldn't afford VOIP in those offices, even though we had a network going there. Hmm. The upgrades we had to make wasn't justifiable. So the regional and national offices went to on-premise system, and the small offices went to cloud. Well, that makes sense. And a follow-up on that, uh, it, it seems almost like if you are a real laggard in updating to modern technology, it might make sense to just jump right over any sort of on-premise install and go right to the cloud. Absolutely. Because yeah, there are people out there, and I, some companies from surveys, how long have you kept your TDM switch? <laughs> 15, 20 years, all right? You're kidding. No. Now, Ericsson, for an example, is a very loyal base there, and they were the highest retention time of anyone we surveyed. So you start looking at that saying, well, I can't get the parts, I can't get the service. Should I really go for an on-premise system or just jump to the cloud? It just aged out of uh, maintenance. At some point, you've got to give them kudos for hanging on and making something like that still run after 20 years. But, yeah. but then I think if maybe we could get the Cubans to do all the maintenance work because they, 
handle all the old cars very well. That's true. Yeah, they run like tops. Um, so let's, uh, while we're talking about um, large enterprises and small making the decision to go to the cloud or not, what are some of the barriers to a company choosing UCAS uh, over that on-premises installation? Okay, well, I've made some notes about that because there are lots of barriers, all right? <laughs> Good. First of all, am I going to...